In real life, it's important to remember that you're not the main character and that you need to be considerate of other... Sorry, we were just filming a... Quiet, NPC. Where are my Haribos? NPC. But in video games, you most definitely are the main character, and all the NPCs are just there as bit parts in the story of your greatness. I... well... okay. I guess you're right. It was a silly idea. I'll just stick to doing what's important. You shouldn't abuse this privilege, though, because you never know when an NPC might snap, and then you're in for a world of trouble, main character or not. Let these seven NPCs you pushed too far, with disastrous consequences for you, serve as a cautionary tale. And beware spoilers for the following games. Ostensibly a hero, Link from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sure does go around being a colossal jerk. He's always running around smashing pots, hitting chickens, and worst of all, paragliding overhead while wearing extremely short tunics. Avert your eyes, citizens of Hyrule. But the NPCs in Breath of the Wild tend to just let Link get on with it on account of how he's here to defeat the ancient evil that has poisoned their land and castle and kidnapped their princess and all that stuff. Plus, they've all probably got pot insurance by now. However, there is one NPC in Breath of the Wild who can only be pushed so far by the Hylian champion, and that's Magda, an unassuming looking woman who lives on the Florit sandbar. Magda grows flowers and is very proud of them to the point where she will politely ask Link to not trample all over them in his adventuring boots, if that wouldn't be too much trouble. If you step on the flowers after this discussion, Magda will remind you again that she'd really rather you didn't do that. Ah. Do it a third time, however, and all bets are off as Magda goes absolutely ballistic. Ah! The screen dips to black and she punches and kicks you, the hero of Hyrule, unconscious. When you wake up, Magda has calmed down, but you've lost three hearts. But also, gained a newfound respect for flowers. A fair exchange, I think you'll agree. Animal Crossing is a game you play to relax, assuming you find it relaxing to have a furious mole wave a pickaxe in your face. <laughs> Meet Mr. Rossetti, probably the only character in the first Animal Crossing on the GameCube who openly despises you, as opposed to despising you in secret, like Tom Nook does, and maybe some of the neighbours. Mr. Rossetti pops his snout out of the ground to read you the riot act whenever you commit what is, in his mind, a cardinal sin. Namely, resetting the game without saving first, which you could do in the first Animal Crossing by pressing the chunky reset button on the GameCube. In the olden days, you might hit the reset button for all sorts of reasons. For instance, if the game froze, if you made a mistake and wanted to kill the game without it saving, or if you just got stuck in a conversation with your least favourite villager. <laughs> But resetting isn't how Animal Crossing wants to be played. Instead, it prefers you to manually save at your house before quitting to ensure progress is logged. As such, if a player resets, the next time they fire up the game, Rossetti is there to tell you politely, but firmly, not to reset your game. That's the first time, but decide to push your luck, and also the reset button again, and see what happens. <laughs> Subsequent resets see Rossetti deliver increasingly furious bollockings. Continue to abuse the reset button and Rossetti will by turns rage, then become eerily calm, waxing philosophical about reset culture and confessing that showing up to tell you off is ruining his health.
And then if you push Rossetti even further than that, you'll tip him right over the edge. He'll start to make threats about resetting the game himself, using his influence as the master of resetting to delete all your progress. Is Rossetti merely bluffing? Well, reset enough times and you'll find out. Oh my god, he really did it. My furniture! My inventory! I had so many bugs I hadn't handed in! Oh, thank god! Turns out Rossetti is just joking about erasing all your progress, which frankly tells you everything you need to know about this malicious mole and his warped sense of humour. There are some things you don't joke about, Rossetti, and this is one of them. As a practicing archaeologist, Lara Croft is filled with a deep respect for all the cultures of the world and their ancient treasures. Animals, on the other hand, can f right off. Endangered? You will be. It's possible, of course, that the reason Lara is respectful of the people she comes across in her tomb raiding is that she knows if she pushes them too far, things are going to go very badly for her. This is absolutely the case in Tomb Raider 2 in the Barkhang Monastery in Tibet, home to a group of warrior monks tasked with protecting an ancient artifact known as the Talion. During the course of Tomb Raider 2, the monastery comes under attack from a group of mercenaries and Lara can fight alongside the monks in trying to repel these attackers and defend the Talion. If Lara attacks one of the friendly monks, however, things take a very different turn and suddenly every single monk in the entire monastery has a new goal, killing Lara Croft as quickly and efficiently as possible. I don't know if you've ever tried completing a Tomb Raider level while guiding a conga line of 30 furious killer monks behind you, but as you can imagine, it's pretty difficult. And sooner or later, this is going to happen. I don't know much about Tibetan monks, but I reckon that's karma. Mario generally seems like a pretty positive person in his platforming games. It's only when he shows up in other genres or other people's games that he tends to act out. Let's go. Way to show up your brother in his own game. For the height of Mario dickery, however, you have to look to Super Mario RPG, where you're given a lot more control over Mario's personality. Here you can have him do things like be a jerk to toad kids. You can also, if you choose, make Mallow cry. You monster. All this reaches ahead later in the game when you have to go and see the Chancellor, and time is of the absolute essence. If you try to wander off elsewhere, Toadstool will appear and remind you you're supposed to be going the other way. Ignore her and Mallow will show up, working the angle that the Chancellor will be worried sick if you don't go there right away. Ignore him and Gina will pop out and warn that you'll be charged with kidnapping if you don't return with the princess right away. Ignore him and freaking Bowser shows up and is like, come on bro, be reasonable here. <laughs> Say no to Bowser as well and they all have finally had enough of your procrastination and theatrically yell at Nintendo's beloved mascot. So what I'm getting from this is you should probably go see the Chancellor. We are almost set to go here. I'm telling you, Jim, you can feel the electricity in the air. You certainly can, Rog. Definitely electric. The moment we've all been waiting for. Let's take a look. Oh, wait a minute here. Where is he? Is oh, he... he's on the roof. He's on the roof. Oh, come on. This is come suicide. On. Oh. Uh, no, 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 no,
no, no, no, this is all wrong, this is wrong. Generally, the point in a skate game is to hurt yourself as much as possible. Wait, I'm just hearing now, the point is actually to skate in a cool and skillful way. News to me. However, because Skate 3 takes place in what I'm sure the developers would describe as a living, breathing world, the levels you're skating around are also full of pedestrians just going about their daily business, unconcerned with the gnarly rail grinds and 1080 Christairs going on in their vicinity. I call it a Christair because after you do it, you meet Jesus. Generally, you and these pedestrians can coexist peacefully, but if you happen to collide with one during one of your many amazing tricks, you'll find they don't take it too well. Hey, idiot, keep that up, I'll stop you in a recycling bin. Especially if you actually get off your board and provoke them further. In fact, sustain this needless belligerence and the innocent passers-by will flip out and start chasing you down with one thing on their mind, knocking you on your baggy trousered ass. <laughs> Once they are aggroed, these pedestrians are as relentless as a T-1000, so if you want to avoid injury, you'd better get out of their sharpish, and get back to the real game, which unfortunately also carries quite a high chance of injury. What's up? Didn't think I'd catch up to you? Ah yes, my Christ Floor 1080. Hey, <laughs> it's good to see you, man. Mm. Yeah, I bet it is. Of course, I'm not the one that's been resurrected. Ain't this grand, hmm? Yeah, well, I got in a bit of an awkward situation. Mm, you're telling me, bro. Yeah. One of those fake your own deaths to your best buddy, and then run off with the dough, and then live in a big mansion awkward situations. Famously, Grand Theft Auto V has three protagonists. There's Franklin, the one who's best at driving. I got respect for reality. <laughs> Michael, the one who's best at shooting. I'm rich, I'm miserable. I'm pretty average for this town. And Trevor, the one who's best at unbridled chaos. Lots of friends. I mean, things could get really messy. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've unlocked them all, you can switch between these characters at will. But when you do, the other characters don't disappear from the map. They're still around, and they will react to things you do. Like, for example, firing rockets at their house. Stop firing rockets at my house! If you encounter one of these other player characters, now in their NPC form because you're not controlling them, you might be tempted to give them a punch or two, because this is a GTA game, and violence is your primary form of communication. T, give me a break! The character will obviously not be pleased, but they will initially not retaliate, because we're all in this together, right team? <laughs> Alright, that's enough! Cross the invisible line into too much unprovoked punching, however, and that GTA violence will kick back in. Your heist buddy will retaliate in spectacular fashion, wasting you immediately. There's a moral here, although it is essentially don't punch people in the face for no reason. And if you needed to learn that, well, you've probably got bigger issues. Now if I were illicitly exploring the creepy mansion of a family of weirdos, I would simply not provoke any of them for fear that they would kill me. And yet, that's exactly what it's possible to do in proto-graphic adventure Maniac Mansion. In this game you find yourself in the family home of the Edison family, oddball scientists whose minds have been enslaved by a sentient meteor. The most physically imposing of the Edisons is their son, Weird Ed, who seems to love only two things. One, physical violence, and two, his hamster. As such, it is advisable that you don't steal Weird Ed's prized hamster. That's just common sense. What's also common sense is not putting Weird Ed's hamster into a microwave and then turning the microwave on. That's a bad idea in so many directions, it's making me dizzy. 
And yet the game does let you do exactly that. You might even now get away with this terrible thing you've done. Or alternatively, you can scrape up those bits of exploded hamster and show them to Weird Ed. At this point, the game understandably decides that you've really done it this time, and Weird Ed straight up murders your current character, probably rendering your entire game unwinnable into the bargain. Which, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty much with Ed on this one. So those were seven NPCs who you just pushed too f who you just pushed too far. And in the end, they couldn't take it anymore, and they snapped at you. So that's real. That noise is uh, uh, okay. Do I want one? Do I want one? What? Well, yes would have been the answer. I don't want you to throw them at you me want though. One. Are you gonna throw? So why not suggest? Pile into the comments, folks, with your suggestions of more NPCs who you just pushed too far, and. Um, Hey, maybe we can make a commenter edition of this video. In the meantime, why not join our Patreon at patreon.com slash oxclub. And hey, there are some other videos here. Not the eyes. <laughs>